Awesome. Here we go. So today we're going to focus a little bit more on each of our features and really study them in a little bit more in depth than we have. And our, um, our little project that we did yesterday will help us to prepare for today because today we're going to start looking a little bit more of shadows because when you look at your face, you don't see any lines, even though we use lines to draw what we see. But there's really no lines on my face, right? It's just shapes. It's just hills and valleys and curves and different shapes that make up my face. Um, so the way we show that in a drawing is by shading, by getting your pencil and making some areas darker and some areas lighter and some in between areas. And that's how we give things shape and dimension. So they look just like they do on our face. So, um, and your features really define who you are. Like my eyes don't look like your eyes. And so being able to see um, someone's features and the actual shape of their face and their features will really make it look like that person. Um, so the other thing we wanted to discuss today is how our features change depending on the emotion um, that we have. So I want you to get your mirror. Do you girls have your mirror? Yeah. Now. So I want you to look at your face and really look at your eyes or your mouth and your nose and really look at the shape that they are. Have you ever looked in the mirror and studied your face to see what it looks like? You might, you might notice some things that you've never noticed before about your face. And then, after you look at your face, I want you to make a happy face and see how your features change. Like, when I start to smile, my cheeks up here kind of get rounder and they kind of push up my eye, and my eyes close a little bit. So when I was a little girl, I would get super squinty eyes whenever I'd smile in pictures, and I'd have to try and keep my eyes open a little bit more. Do you guys' eyes get a little squinty when you smile? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they get a little, more, a little more long and skinny, right, instead of rounder. So that's, um, we're just smiling. We're just lifting up the edges of our mouth, but it affects all the other parts of our face because underneath our skin is muscle. And our muscles have to move in order to get our mouth to go up and they move all different other parts of our face. Okay, now we're gonna make a sad face. Watch what your face does when you make a sad face. Maybe your lips droop down a little bit and make your eyes look a little, look a little uh, saggy, a little droopy. Everything kind of goes down, huh? Yeah, good job, Madeline. <laughs> That's great. Okay, and then maybe we can make an angry face. Yeah, that's a good one, Madeline. Maybe your your eyebrows furrow together. They get closer together and maybe your forehead wrinkles. Um, like diagonal. Yeah, diagonal, yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. So you can see how different expressions change our face. How about excited? 
Yeah, like our mouth gets big, and I have like lines on my cheeks and dimples. Do you girls have dimples? <laughs> you can get excited. Yeah. And then maybe shock. Sometimes, whenever I'm excited, I pretty much almost get asked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, Make the face that like you're shocked about something. Something happened that shocked you. Oh my goodness! I can't believe they did that. Wow! Oh, we were shocked probably yesterday. Look! Look at your face. What do What do your features do? My eyebrows go up and curve away from my eyes. And my chin goes down, and it gets a little thinner, and my, my mouth is round. <laughs> yeah, so lots of changes there. What about unsure? Hmm. Hmm. Look at my lips. Hmm. I'm going to go to the side. Hmm. I wonder. I have like these creases over here, but not over here, depending on what side my, my mouth goes to. Hmm. Yeah. What about scared? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's so scared. What are we Yeah, so. Kind of fun to watch your face with lots of different expressions to see how your features change. So if you want to draw someone with a certain expression, you can think what would their eyes look like or their mouth look like if they were or scared they were. or if they were happy or, right? sad. or sad. So or happy. They're not, they're not all going to stay the same. They're going to change. All right. So we're going to work on some eyes today. Okay, to start with. I'm going to point my camera down. All right. I'm going to use a darker pencil for you girls. You just need a piece of paper or your sketchbook and your pencil. Oh, you know what? Before we get started on that, I wanted to show you the pictures in our curriculum that I, I included. Look at this girl. She's happy, really? probably laughing. Do you guys ever close your eyes when you laugh? <laughs> yeah. And then look at this girl. She's very sad, isn't she? You can tell she is very, very sad. Yeah, look at the wrinkle in her, her eyebrows. She's very concerned, isn't she? And then this, this man can is I, my Can own. I use the paper from my sketchbook? Yeah, you can use one of these to reference and this girl. What did, what do you think she looks like? She looks like cut it. I think she looks scared. She looks a little uh scared. Yeah. She looks scared. Pretty hard. She looks a little scared, doesn't she? Yeah. And this, this person you think she She's probably kind of laughing. Yeah, she's laughing. And look at her, how squinty her eyes are. Very small. Huh. And then, what do you think she looks like? Shocked. Yeah, shocked, right? Or in wonder and awe. Yeah, that's perfect. And you can see her eyes are big and her mouth is big. 
We're trying to keep all those things in mind as we draw our features today, okay? That the shape of our features can change a lot. So there's really no right or wrong way to draw something, okay? So to start with, for my eye, I'm going to draw a horizontal line on my paper. The short one. Nora, are you doing okay? In the bottom? Anywhere on your paper. I put mine up in the top, but you can put it wherever. Laura, I don't see you. Are you are you still there? Okay. And then um, I'm gonna draw an eye like we drew the other day. You can see the difference. Okay, so this is how we drew our eye the other day, like an almond shape on this line. And this corner was in the same place as this corner, right? But an eye actually is not the same on either side. So it might, it starts on this line on the outside of the eye, but the inside of the eye actually droops below that line. You see that? So the inside corner of your eye is a little lower than the outside corner of your eye. And usually there's a little bit of shape to this bottom line. See how it's kind of a little bit like an S curve here? Okay. Yep, that looks great. Okay, and then, okay, we can put in the eyeball. And remember our eyeball, we don't see all of it. We just see the bottom part of it, kind of like a fishbowl shape. This eye looks like it's pretty a little mad. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. And then another thing about our eye is we usually have an eyelid. that kind of connects over here and creates this other line on top of our eye. Now, depending on your age, you may have more lines. If you're a newborn, you may have less lines. So depending on the age of the person, your eyes are going to look different even. Okay, so here's where we can really start to add some dimension to the eye. Okay, usually there's some kind of highlight inside your eyeball where the light hits it because it's, it's a circle. It's not a flat shape, so it's going to reflect some of that light. Yeah, so put in your little highlight. And then you can um, you can draw and fill in your your pupil, and that is the darkest part of your eye, right? It's really dark. It's black, basically. So that will be the darkest part of our eye. You can really shade that in. 
And then we have like these little lines in our eyes that kind of come out like a sunburst. Do you see that? They kind of are different sizes. that kind of give that eye some detail. So another thing our eye has is this little tear duct right in the corner of the eye. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. You see like that little area right right here it's just like a little tiny tear duct in the corner of your eye okay and then there's an area in your eyelid because your eye kind of creates a shadow right on the top, right underneath this, the top of your eye. Not your eyelid line, but the first line that we drew. So you can darken in that line because it, it creates this shadow right there. Can you see how already our eye is taking shape? Like it doesn't look flat anymore already. Got it? Okay. And then there's some shadow and it, it will probably look different and you can use your finger to kind of blend it after you, you sh um, after you draw, if you draw with your pencil like, like that, then you can use your finger to blend it. So there's this space above your eye and it's underneath your eyebrow that's shaded. Right above the crease of your eye. And then you can blend it with your finger to make it look like a shadow. Oh, looks awesome, Nora. I'm glad you're there. I couldn't see you. Okay. And then also, there might be some shadow right underneath your eye. So just shade a little bit underneath your eye and then use your finger to blend it. Do you see how our eye is now? It looks like a real eyeball, just with a few little extra things. Pretty cool, huh? That looks amazing, Madeline. So now you know how to shade an eye to make it look realistic. So, and I actually realized I put my teardrop on the wrong side of my eye. I put it on the outside corner instead of the inside corner. And I also, I did everything backwards actually. <laughs> so it's fine. But yeah, looks awesome, huh? Okay. Good job. 
eyes are sometimes the trickiest things to draw and they take a lot of practice but those are the basic things you're going to have a shadow underneath the eyebrow and you're going to have a shadow underneath your eye and you're going to have a dark area right along here and then you can start adding in eyelashes they're usually when we look at ourselves from the mirror the middle is usually the longest but when we draw it um, i like to draw where the outside out here is usually the longest okay so you can you can draw some eyelashes on your your eye too but don't make them too long just short because they actually curve around and so we only see the a little bit of the part that curves up we don't see the whole eyelash because they're they're not straight up they kind of curve also in the bottom yes yeah. Also on the bottom, make them really, really short on the bottom because your eyelashes are shorter on the bottom than they are on the top. Can you see that? I can't see yours, Madeline. Can you move it closer? Oh, that looks amazing. Good job. How is yours going, Nora? All right, now let's do a node. Okay, so you remember how before I taught you to draw a circle? And then to draw two smaller circles. Okay overlap that middle circle like that okay um we're gonna erase the tops of those circles because we don't need them so you're just left with the bottoms of the circle. Okay, and then underneath the nose is where we're going to get most of our shadows. We're going to draw a nice line underneath those circles. And then where it kind of dips up is where your nostrils are. Okay, so you can draw um, kind of like a football shape. Right where those U circles meet. Okay, now when you look at your nose, there really is no line right here, right? It's just shadow. So usually one side of the nose will have more shadow than the other side of the nose. And if you can see, there's even more shadow around my nostrils, okay? And then it's light on the tip of my nose and more shaded on the edges. Okay, so what we can do is we can we can draw our nostrils up and maybe sh shade it a little bit. And you can use your finger to kind of shade it break down that shading a little bit ok 
Okay, using that. Okay, and then we can do some shading down the bridge of the nose. Something like something like that. And then you can use your finger again to blend it. And if your shading goes too far, you can always use your eraser to erase some of the shading. When you blend it, it's a little too far. Awesome, Nora, that looks great. Good job, Nora, that looks wonderful. Okay, and then remember, we have some shading on the side of our nose but not in the middle. Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna leave just a little bit unshaded down here. So a little bit of shading on either side of the nose. Okay, and then Right underneath my nose is a lot more shading, right? Because it goes underneath. The light isn't going to hit it. So I'm going to shade. Right underneath my nose too. Okay. Looks amazing! Okay, so that's basically all you need to do for a nose. Okay, and the shading, depending on the person's nose, is going to be a little different. All right, now we can do the mouth. Okay, so remember how we started our mouth last time? Is we made two circles next to each other, like that. And then you can either put one circle in the middle, or I'm going to show you a different way today. I'm going to put two circles right there. <laughs> okay, so then the darkest area of our lip is right in the middle here. So you can make this long line that kind of goes around your circles, goes over this one and, and curves up in between these circles and then curves down. And then I just, I just brought it straight out. But the shape would change depending on whether you were smiling or whether you were sad. So right now, we'll just draw it straight out. That looks great, Nora. Good job. Okay. And remember this little dip on our lip right above our lip. We're going to make that little dip. And then the other line we're going to draw is this line. Okay. 
in the bottom. On the bottom. And it kind of goes around this circle and then curves up in between the circles and then goes around them again. Okay. And then the top line. Curves over those circles. And I brought mine out. So it goes up over that circle, dips down between the circle, and over the circle again. Okay, so remember our lips really don't have these lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase those little circles that we made. Okay, so I erased my circles, but my lines are still there. All right, and I'm going to shade my top lip, just like that. You see how I shaded the top lip? Because the way our lips are shaped is they go out here, and then they go in on the top lip, and they go out on the bottom lip, and then back in underneath the bottom lip. So the parts that go out are going to catch more light and the parts that go in are going to be in shadow. Okay, and you can blend that with your finger. And then I'm going to shade right underneath that bottom line. You see that? And you can bring your shading out a little bit to, to find the shape of that lip some more. And then blend it together. on <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay, another place that we have shadow is right in that dip. Right in the dip of our mouth, right there. Or that little dip underneath our nose. Then our lip has like little lines on it. Give it. Not at all. 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 Not at this in this middle line, you might have like little shaded areas right where the crease of your mouth is, the edge of your mouth. It might be shaded right there. And do you see how the shading kind of gives it some shape? You could even erase this top line and this bottom line, and just with the shading, it would it would give the shape of your lips. And those are the the shadows and the highlights that we saw in our picture. Oh, you smell good. Let me see your, me see your lips. Madeline. Awesome. 
And if you want, you could even take your eraser and erase all the shadow from that bottom lip. That bottom lip should be a little lighter. No. Perfect. That looks good. How about yours, Nora? How'd you do? And those are already doing so well. And it takes artists lots of practice to get these right. Good job, Nora. That's great. Hey, so now that we practiced our eyes and mouth and nose a little bit more, um, you guys want to draw a picture with an expression of your choice? Okay, so you can start by drawing the shape of your head. You can do like an egg What's shape. A uh, different shape, okay. On a different paper, yeah. On a new paper, draw the shape of your head. You can do the egg shape, or you can do the circle, and then add in the chin. Do you see how they kind of come out the same? Okay, so whichever method is easier for you. Okay, and then we can start placing those lines again. Those halfway lines. And horizontal. Okay, and then you can draw your eyes. And remember the inside corner of your eye is going to dip down a little lower than the outside corner of your eye. And depending on what expression you want to give your person, they might be really squinty, they might be really big and round, and you can reference one of your pictures, you can pick one, and try and draw the shape of their eyes. Maybe, maybe I'll draw her, I like her expression. Maybe this one. And their eye shape is going to be a little different. Oh, my girl has little eyes, little beady eyes. And you see how the shape of them are different? They're not the same. And so that's okay if they're different shapes.
And then you can draw all the little lines that around their eye. My girl has a lot because she's an older woman. And when you get older, you get a little bit more lines. You see all the lines I drew for her eyes. So you might have a line for your eyelid and maybe a line underneath your eye. Maybe you have a line where the bridge of the nose and eyebrows are. I'm done with this Awesome. That's a good one. And then you can go to their nose. And their nose is going to be between their eyes and the bottom. Okay, and you can start with the bottom of the nose. My girl has a big nose. So I'm going to draw a pretty big circle for her nose. Okay. You see my circle is bigger. It might actually even be bigger than that. I'm going to draw her circle that big. Okay, and then you can start putting in the nostrils where those circles meet. And even everyone's nostril shape is going to be a little different too. My girl has a lot of shading on this side of her nose. I'm going to erase my, my circles. I'm just left with those other lines. Do you guys see that? Awesome, Madeline. That looks great. Hey, okay. and then we can go to the lips. The lips are going to be right in between the middle of your, where your bottom of your nose is and your, your chin. And I think my chin is a little too long. So I'm going to draw her chin shape. Probably more like that. And you can draw big circles or little circles depending on how wide their lips are. My girl has thinner lips. So I'm going to draw short, smaller circles. And I drew the middle, yeah. the middle. I And then you could even just draw the shading that you see. I'm tired. Can you grab a chair? 
you guys see that? Can you draw, um, like, the hair? Yep, you can draw the hair. The hairline? Yep, you can draw the hairline. Good job, Nora. That looks good. Good. Good job, Jalen. My girl has some curls. Um, and I can't see her, um, her ears because her hair covers it. And then you can add in eyebrows because people look kind of weird without eyebrows. Although I can't see her eyebrows very well. And if your shading is a little out of whack, you can always erase it. Okay, and then you can erase all your lines on your face. All those guidelines we don't need anymore. Unless you need to draw in your ears, you can use them to do that. Okay, and then you can do the details. You can do the pupil of the eye, just like we drew the eye earlier. If your person has little smile lines, you can draw in those lines around their, their mouth, like that. Or if they have lines on their forehead, you can draw in lines on their forehead. Great, Madeline. Hey, how's yours coming along, Nora? Awesome. You girls did great today. So now you know how to draw your facial features even better. So when you go to draw our other portraits, you'll be a pro at it. Yeah. You guys, your girls did a great, great job today. And tomorrow, we are going to be using our construction paper and our magazines or newspapers. And you could even collect um, things around your house that you might want to use, like um, fabric or buttons or whatever and we're gonna need glue and scissors we're gonna be doing um, more of an abstract face because now that we understand where our facial features go and the shape of them now we can start kind of breaking the rules or pushing the boundaries which is what a lot of portrait artists do yep it's going to be fun. <laughs> so we'll see you girls tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can't wait. You guys have a good rest of your day. Okay. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye girls. Bye. Bye.